Hey everyone, and welcome to this weekend's sermon here at Sunny Hills Church. So uh, we're studying through the Bible in chronological order this year. We're to 586 BC. That's when Jerusalem falls to the Babylonians. Uh, Israel really is no more. They're a conquered land. They're carried off into exile. Of course, uh, God's going to restore the land. Uh, there's going to be a season of destruction and heartache and and really hurt. In fact, today's sermon is entitled, How to Handle Gut-Wrenching Tears. And boy, there was a, a lot of that in Jeremiah's day as they were trying to make sense of, you know, why has our country collapsed? Why has God apparently abandoned us? What about our children and our, our homes were being marched off into exile? This doesn't feel good at all. And of course, we have experiences like that in our modern day world. Uh, we lose a job or we, a loved one uh, is passing away. I've got several fans, uh, friends in church right now that are going through a season of loss with maybe someone in an older generation. And man, it is hard. It's just difficult. And the, and the tears flow and your stomach turns in knots. And so let's talk about how God can help us through those times. First of all, here's kind of where Jeremiah is. The book of Lamentations is written by Jeremiah. And Jeremiah uh, kind of summarizes in chapter 2, verses 11 and 12, kind of how he's feeling about everything. I mean, he's, he's, war he's warned God's people. He's said the Babylonians are coming and it's not going to be great. And boy, was he ever correct. Uh, the people of God just stubbornly refuse to obey, even through these uh, difficult times. And so here's what he says. My eyes are spent with weeping. Jeremiah is called the weeping prophet. His, he's just so emotionally connected to the people that he's serving. My stomach churns. My bile is poured out to the ground because of the destruction of the daughter of my people. Uh, the daughter of my people would be a reference to Jerusalem because infants and babies faint in the streets of the city. They cry to their mothers, where is bread and wine? As they faint like a wounded man in the streets of the city, as their life is poured out on their mother's bosom. You know, we've all seen pictures, I imagine, from <coughs> news stories about terrible times of war, um, in Ukraine, in the Sudan, in Syria, uh, all across the world, there's just heartache and trouble. And uh, those pictures when children are hurting are just uh, the absolute, absolute worst. And Jeremiah, as he looks through the streets of Jerusalem, you know, the mothers are, are in the streets with their, their poor little children, and there's nothing to eat. And it's just a, it's a desperate scene, so much so another Bible translation uh, says pretty much, I vomit through my tears for this, for the streets of Jerusalem. And so he's just, he's absolutely, he's absolutely wrecked. Grief is uh, when we lose something. Back in the day in the Peanuts comic strip, Charles Schultz was the writer of that, a believer, and he often dealt with the issue of grief in his comic strips. Uh, Charlie Brown was all the time uh, losing his kite or he, his, uh, uh, the football was moved away at the last minute. He's laying on the ground in despair and hurt, and Charlie Brown's famous, uh, quote, good grief. I can't believe, a good grief. Well, is grief good? Going through a season of loss. I guess we could approach this from kind of like an academic, like um, perspective. Like here's a chart of some things that can cause grief. Uh, loss of a friendship, of health, loss of a job. We think of grieving as uh, grieving the death of a loved one. But really, anything that you lose, your car, your car keys, uh, you know, you've anguished over that. Uh, the death of a loved one, of course, the loss of a pet. Oh, that just is especially difficult. 
divorce or a relationship breakup, the loss of financial stability. Here in the law, in the last couple of years, we've had a lot of grief. We've lost our, with the COVID situation, uh, of course, some of this is being restored now, but we lost mobility. We lost gathering in groups. We lost birthdays. Sometimes we weren't even, quote, allowed to visit the graveside of a loved one at their funeral. I mean, it was just terrible what we endured. And uh, just layers upon layers of these things just uh, cause such a, a weight and an agony. The great thing about the book of Lamentations, though, the book Lamentations means to cry for, to be sorrow for, is that Jeremiah says that a new thing is happening, that God is doing something cool. He is rebuilding what is lost. Lost. So let me turn over to uh, Lamentations chapter 3. I'm going to read verses 22 through 26. I'll try to give you some hope this morning about uh, grieving and about what God can do to restore some of what was lost. Uh, this is Lamentations 3, 22 through 26. There it is. The unfailing love of the Lord never ends. By his mercies, we have been kept from complete destructions. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh every day. I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is wonderfully good to those who wait for him and seek him. So it is good to wait quietly for salvation from the Lord, and it is good for the young to submit to the yoke of his discipline. And so he was saying that even through those times when we feel like we're being disciplined or even when life just seems hard, that there's still God's hands are at work rebuilding. Let's kind of dig into that just a little deeper this morning. Love and mercy are discoverable this morning. Verse 23, his mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. You know, my dad passed away during the COVID-19 crisis, not from COVID, although I think his care was somewhat uh, affected by COVID in the hospital. Uh, who knows what would have happened, you know, woulda, coulda, shoulda. I guess these are all questions we have about uh, loss and grieving, what could have been done differently. But one thing I always appreciated about my dad was he said that every morning he always determined that he was going to accomplish something that day, that there was something to do, some encouragement, some way to help someone each and every day. And oftentimes, like in the, the evening, the previous evening, he'd write down what his goals were for the next day. Uh, he lived until he was, nine, until he was 90, uh, helped his, uh, his wife uh, to navigate the waters of Alzheimer's. I mean, there's just something about expecting God to rise with the sun. Now, I just want to encourage you today, if you're going through a season of loss, um, it's easy to look in the rearview mirror. Boy, I've done that. I'm still doing that in some ways. But boy, to imagine that God could do something new today, that there are actually mercies that are discoverable, discoverable if we'll look for them each and every morning. And God's faithfulness is great. Great is your faithfulness. You know, there's a, a hymn. In my old Baptist hymnal entitled, uh, Great is Thy Faithfulness. And boy, it's true. It's absolutely true. God is going to remain faithful for us. And Jeremiah is saying this in the face of contrary evidence. The children are dying in the streets, and yet he can say, God is faithful. You know, there's uh, things that happen on a, like a human historical level. And then beneath the surface, God's hand is at work. Everything you see isn't everything, right? There's so much more. There's a spiritual reality beyond what we can see or hear or think. God is beyond all of that. And even through times of difficulty, God remains faithful to his promises. 
and her hope is in God's provision. The Lord is my portion. He's my inheritance. He's, he's my source of, of hope, says Jeremiah's soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. Now, when you lose something, you lose a pet, you lose your job, you lose a loved one. Uh, it's so easy to focus on what you've lost and uh, keep focusing. By all means, don't forget. Remember, uh, go through those photo albums. Talk to your friends and family members about what you've lost. Um, but God is still providing for our needs even when this great provision has 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 gone uh, a friend or a loved one dies or a pet who gave you so much encouragement that was a part of god's provision for you a part of his portion for you and just because that portion is lost doesn't mean that every portion is lost so uh, lean into what god has left for you and to enjoy the hope that that brings. And then waiting and seeking um, are really disciplines for what I call the tear-stained life. Uh, I've had a couple, uh, well, during the COVID experiences, I mean, I spent some days in tears. Uh, loved ones, uh, not being able to visit people that I love so dearly. Uh, my dad passed away, had three pets. Uh, to pass away. I mean, these were hard times. And then saw my church attendance, people that I loved, you know, I gave up on meeting together. And, you know, I kind of grieved that loss. So there was a, a, a lot going on. But there's something cool here. The Lord is good to those who wait for him. God may not rebuild uh, my life completely today. But I know that he is in the process of rebuilding what is lost. And so it's my job to wait on the master builder and to see what he's going to do next. Oh, I'm in such a hurry. But one thing about grieving and going through times of life is just to slow down and to wait on the Lord to do his work of restoration and rebuilding. So waiting and seeking God is uh, absolutely disciplines that God uses to help us through our tear-stained days. And then being quiet is good, but God is rebuilding what is lost. Lamentations 3.26 says, It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Gosh, we have so many outlets for being uh, uh, speaking out today. Uh, Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. Um, there's uh, just a, a great opportunity to uh, to share your griefs and concern. And boy, that's what some people just they absolutely uh, relish knowing that others know their pain. And I understand that. But uh, there's something to be said about quietly waiting for the Lord. Uh, maybe you're not the kind of person that lets your feelings hang all out. Uh, you're not the kind of person that is like super expressive of your sadness or your loss. Hey, that's okay. In fact, this Bible verse encourages you. There's, uh, there's hope and strength and blessings for those who express their grief quietly. Now, if you're the kind that if, if it's helpful to you to share, and boy, I really encourage that. Get with a friend uh, in your small group at church. Uh, invite a friend to have a cup of coffee and just say, man, I need, I need to talk to somebody. Let it out by all means. But also, uh, you know, you have permission to do that <laughs> quietly. Whatever works for you under the leadership of, of the Lord, his spirit uh, can minister and rebuild whether we're loud and boisterous about our grief or whether we're soft and quiet spoken about it, I want to let you know that God is rebuilding what is lost as you quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. And look, there's a completion date. Even if the Lord seems slow by our perception, 
Of course, he's never late, never early. He's always on time. But there's a beautiful completion date. If you're anguished with tears to the point that Jeremiah vomiting in the streets over the sorrow that he sees. Uh, Jeremiah said a new day, a new covenant was coming, that God was going to do some new things. And that new thing is going to be wrapped up and completed in Revelation 21.4. This is the Apostle John in the New Testament, of course, prophesying about heaven and telling us what that will be like. And he will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning nor crying nor pain anymore for the former things have passed away. Oh, oh believer, oh friend. Um, I look forward to wiping away those tears. You know, when, when your granddaughter or child uh, falls down and scrapes their their knee and they're crying, you know, you just wipe away those tears. You pull her, her close and pat her on the back. Baby, it'll be all right. It'll be all right. And I want you to know that uh, that, that awaits all of us who are believers in Jesus as we uh, celebrate the idea of, of heaven and being in a place with no tears and no sorrow and all of the former things which caused us pain to be gone away. There is a glorious completion date. When? I, I don't know. I don't know how long I have left on this earth or when Jesus is coming back, but I look forward uh, to living here and trusting Jesus and growing in my faith as best I can. But when that time's over, oh, there's good things yet to come. There's a, a beautiful place of heaven awaiting for me. So here's the question to consider today. Where do you see God rebuilding in your life? Like, Can you hear those little spiritual hammers and saws um, at work as God's doing a new thing within you, even through a time of loss, you have gut-riching sorrow. And I just want to encourage you today that the Lord is doing a work of rebuilding, that God is faithfulness. His mercies are new every day. Let's pray about that. Here's the closing prayer. Let me just read the prayer first, and then we'll bow our heads. Dear God, some of us have stomachs churning with grief. We've We've lost so much. Seems like we move from one season of loss to the next. We were tired. So we ask, Lord, for a season of refreshment and rebuilding. Each morning, Lord, your mercy, please. Your portion and goodness. Your hope and faithfulness. This is what we need. We need it desperately in Jesus' name. Yeah, let's bow our heads for this closing prayer. Dear God, some of us have stomachs churning with grief. Oh Lord, we've lost so much. It seems like we move from one season of loss to the next. And we're tired. Oh God, we ask for a season of refreshment and rebuilding. Each morning, Lord, your mercy, please. Your portion and goodness. Your hope. And faithfulness. This is what we need desperately. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, I hope you have a great weekend and may the Lord just continue to bless you.